imagine that the brain is, of course, inside your, your skull and it floats in fluid, uh, which is called the cerebrospinal fluid, and subarachnoid hemorrhage is bleeding into that fluid. So if somebody's hit on the head or they fall or are involved in a motor vehicle accident and there's shaking of the, the brain inside the skull, that can cause subarachnoid hemorrhage. But the type that we're most interested in is spontaneous subarachnoid hemorrhage, when a person is otherwise healthy and suddenly they have a terrible headache and that's often due to rupture of a brain aneurysm. That happens every 15 minutes in North America, somebody's struck by a, a ruptured aneurysm. But the main symptom is a sudden severe headache, the worst headache that a person has ever had in their life. And they may be nauseated and, and sick to their stomach and sometimes even uh, go unconscious. Unfortunately, some people uh, succumb almost immediately to the hemorrhage. And the other ones who, who survive, obviously having a terrible headache, go to the hospital. And we see them in the emergency department and do a CT scan, a computed tomography scan of their brain, and we can see the bleeding there and that's how we make the diagnosis. Usually they're put in the intensive care and we have to do a test to find where the bleeding is, where the bleeding aneurysm is, and that's called an angiogram. Find the ruptured aneurysm and we have to try to repair that usually as soon as possible within hours or a day or so of admission. There are two ways that we repair that aneurysm. One way is to do an operation, which is called a craniotomy, and we go in and open the head and put a metal clip on the aneurysm, and that gets rid of it and prevents it from hemorrhaging again. The other way that we treat them is called endovascular coiling. And to do that, we make a puncture into the femoral artery and put catheters up into the aneurysm Catheters are small tubes that we can then thread coils through and fill up the aneurysm with coils and prevent it from bleeding again. And then we put the patient in the intensive care and we keep a close eye on them and we have to watch them often for up to two weeks afterwards because the most common and uh, dreaded complication that can occur over time is something called DCI or delayed cerebral ischemia and what that uh, is is the patient is often doing well they may be awake and talking to us and over the days after the hemorrhage they may start to be uh, confused and, and slip into a coma or become paralyzed on one side and that's often due to this condition called DCI and if that happens we have to do uh, a number of other tests. We do CT scans and another angiogram and it's often caused by narrowing of the brain arteries which is called angiographic vasospasm. And if that occurs and we see that then we uh, have to either raise the blood pressure to try to force more blood through the arteries or we have to put little catheters up into the narrowed arteries and try to dilate them with balloons or drugs. Mm -hmm.